have your attention. We are now about to launch the official side of tonight's proceedings, and I'd like to say a few words. My name is Caleb Williams, and I am this museum's head curator. And on behalf of the Justice and Police Museum and the Historic Houses Trust, I'd like to thank you all for being here tonight for the launch of Mark Tedeschi's new photographic exhibition, Legal Chameleons. A few words about Mark. Aside from his well-known role as Senior Crown Prosecutor of New South Wales, a position held since 1997, Mark Tedeschi is a prolific and passionate photographer. Legal Chameleons is Mark's tenth solo exhibition. He has also been in, in a number of group exhibitions, both in Australia and overseas. We are very honoured tonight to have Richard Ackland as our guest speaker. Richard will be well known to many of you. He is currently legal affairs columnist of the Sydney Morning Herald, the publisher and editor of Justinian, covering the life and times of law and lawyers in Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, I hand you over to Richard Ackland. Thank you. Slight introduction, I thought it could have been a bit more uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, effusive. Henri Cartier-Bresson, one of the Senior Crown Prosecutor's inspirations, said, I took up the camera as a way to escape my family's processed meats and small goods business. <laughs> Robert Mablethorpe, and I think we can see the influence of Robert in some of the <laughs> His love of the pared down human form and the magnificent nether regions he said he loved photography because it could get him into saunas and spas for free on a regular basis. <laughs> the subjects here are drawn from the legal world, predominantly an assortment from the criminal world. It started with Margaret Kameen in 2004 with a tiny digital camera. The photo shows a woman in purple rubber gloves, looking remote and strangely unfamiliar with the requirements of washing up. <laughs> in fact, a close inspection reveals she's washing a cooking pot with its lid on. As long as the outside is spotless is a metaphor for many of our lives, and one clearly captured in this shot. Today, Mark uses a Nikon D200 to get those dramatic, close-in, sharp-edged photos. With each subject, usually many shots are taken, and the photographer exercises his artistic judgment and selects the most compelling. With the photo of Sarah Huggett's luncheon adjournment, at first he chose a snap that revealed the protuberance of a magnificent expanse of alabaster breast emerging from the black gown. <laughs> it is not on display here. <laughs> Instead, I'm advised that art dealer Joseph Lebovic decided that another shot that included Sarah's other young child in the frame was more engaging and endearing, which just goes to show how wrong the rest of us can be. <laughs> and how easy it is for the photographer to make mistaken selections. <laughs> I rather like the one of Frank Hollis in his tank. He reminds me of Denny Crane from Boston Legal. Republican, <laughs> gun lover, warrior. <laughs> then there's Nicholas Cowdery, showing just how far the screws have been tightened on his office. <laughs> his lavishly appointed yacht. With an orange tinny. That face creased with the history of a thousand barristers' tricks. And then there's Chester's face, serene. <laughs> 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 Intriguing snaps is Judge Cogswell in his uh, kitchen cooking. The ingredients he's assembled, if you 
If you look closely, I had to get a magnifying glass on the, on the uh, program. It looked at first like prawns and seven cobs of corn. <laughs> slices of bacon or prosciutto. What on earth is he cooking? <laughs> I can find no credible recipe for this. <laughs> it could sensibly be ingested that includes prosciutto and corn. <laughs> is he trying to torture his family? <laughs> then there's Charlie Water Street with some handy seduction tips. <laughs> How Mark Tedeschi persuaded someone to sit for him who was so adverse to personal exposure <laughs> the potential is nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> In 1951, in New York, uh, a play was performed called I Am A Camera. It was written by Jean Van Druten and inspired by Christopher Isherwood's The Berlin Stories. The play became a film in 1955, also called I Am A Camera, with Julie Harris, Lawrence Harvey and Shelley Winters. This in turn went on to inspire the musical Cabaret, which appeared in 1966, starring Lisa Minnelli and Michael York. I mention this because when Dorothy Parker critically reviewed I Am A Camera, the headline on her article was me no liker. <laughs> Tonight, in this shrine to crime and justice and before the criminal laws finest, I'm honoured to open, launch and extol Mark Tedeschi's legal shenanigans and officially declare, contrary to Dorothy Parker, that me liker a lot <laughs> General Benedetto Latteri, uh, High Court Justice Michael Kirby, Attorney General John Hatsistagos, DPP Nick Cowdery, President of the Bar Association Anna Katzman, members of the judiciary, members of the bar, members of the solicitors, profession, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, thank you so much for coming tonight. I'd like to thank my 20 uh, willing victims who have <laughs> given up not just their time but their some of their deep dark secrets of what they like to do during their private time. Um, I think I should pay special thanks to uh, uh, my director Nicholas Cowdery AMQC who uh, enga has engaged over the last week or two in some controversy with the government purely as a means to advertise this exhibition. <laughs> so that the Telegraph could uh, publish the photograph of Nick in his little tinny on page two under the guise of uh, advertising exhibition. However, they changed my title, which, without asking me, I might add, uh, it was instead of um, uh, rocking the boat, they called it Up the Creek Without a Paddle. <laughs>